<laughs> Hello, welcome to a quickie corner of YouTube. Today, I've been putting together some of the most fun creatures you can make. Sock monkeys. This one I started yesterday evening and I've just completed them today. And I had thought that you guys might be interested in putting one together. And so I could go through it with you uh, as to how I put one together. <laughs> um, not thought of a name for this one. He's quite cute. Um, so I've got to consider what he's going to be called. Uh, so if you've got any ideas, pop me a little note down in the description box and we'll see if we can give him a name. It's kind of got some kind of a print going on on him. <laughs> anyway, let's put him over there to one side. He can go and sit over there, juggle around with the things on my desk, as I have many. Uh, so what you're going to need is a pair of socks. I've got quite a few here. Uh, I suggest new socks. Do not take your socks off as uh, one boy did when I was teaching them how to do this at school. He actually took his own socks off and made a monkey. I don't know how well that went down <laughs> with his parents. Um, but yeah, that's what he did. Um, so I've got four different ones here. I've got to decide which one I'm going to make into a monkey this time. As I did um, a black and white one last time, I think I shall disregard these ones. So I've got these beauties. This has got quite a nice pattern on it. Very nice. I wonder how he'd look as a pair of... Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm going to go with this pair. So you have a pair of socks. You will also need a pair of fabric scissors. You will need maybe a pair of embroidery scissors. You will need some threads to match your socks and some point you might need an awl but not necessarily um but you just need some threads so i'm going to have a little hunt now and find some threads to match these socks okay so i found these two these will do the job i do believe um i tend to use these to sew them together because they're quite strong um so you'll need a needle as well <laughs> also need a needle which I have here so I've got a little needle there now I stitch mine by hand when I made these in on mass uh, say for like a craft fair at a school of some kind I would have possibly broken out my sewing machine to do them but they are super easy to make by hand it's just hand stitching and you don't have to um, dandle around with um, a sewing machine if you don't fancy it. Um, as I said, if I was making a lot of these and whacking out the sewing machine might be appropriate. But sitting under a blanket with a cup of tea and a chocolate tea cake, the best thing you can do is to have a nice little pile of stitching and just enjoy it. So you will need both of these socks. You may not need all of them. I have this bit left over from the sock monkey that I made previously. So I've got a little bit left over for something else another time. So I always save those bits. So the first thing you're going to do, we'll just start with the one to start off with and turn it inside out. So I'm going to go like this. Now, a lot of people use this part here for the top of the monkey and that's part of his head. I don't I don't like that look. I've got a thing about it. It just I don't know, it, it kind of bugs me. So I don't actually use that part. I think it gives him too much of a forehead and I like my monkeys to, if you look at this one, kind of finished off around that end. So I do a little bit of extra stitching in just to get that shape because that's how I like my monkeys. If you like yours with a nice big forehead, then you can leave the toe bit on. That, that is completely up to you. But for me, I'm going to take it off. So the first thing I'm going to do is to trim that toe area off with my big scissors. And line it up and just chop it off. 
like so. Okay, so that's the first cut I'm making. Then I'm going down to the cuff end of the sock. And what I'm going to do, I look where that part is, the heel part, because that's going to be his bottom. And um, I'm going to cut up the middle of here. So I'm eyeballing it at the minute. I'm not really actually measuring anything. You can be very precise if you want to be. So I'm just going to cut up to just before where that heel bit starts. So it's got some nice long lengths. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to sew along this part, but I'm going to give it a slight curve because I, I don't want it to, I don't want him to have a flat top head. I would like it to be a curved along. So I'm going to thread up my needle, I'll be back in a tick. Okay, so my needle's threaded. I'm not going to throw this part away because this is going to be his mouth or his muzzle or whatever you want to call it. That's going to be that part. So I'm going to hold on to that. And what I'm going to do, I said I'm going to go in a curve. So I'm going to take it slightly down from this edge just to give a slight curve to the top of his head. And I am going to backstitch going up in a curve you can mark this if you want to at the moment i've made so many of these um quite a while back i actually made my last one but i made a whole host of these guys um used to make them for my children's school fairs and things so um they used to go down a storm and they are very cute. You can make a whole host of them. <laughs> Give them names. You could have your own monkey army. <laughs> what a thought that is. So you can make other creatures as well. Um, in my time, I've made sock elephants, um, sock giraffes, sock bears, sock dogs. Um, yeah whatever your creature you can make it out of a pair of socks this is kind of like the base um that you would do for maybe perhaps a dog or um you could do sock cats if you wanted um but i do like this for me monkeys so, <laughs> so you can see now i'm starting to slope down with my back stitch kind of about the same area it's not um precise science i tend to eyeball a lot of things <laughs> this is uh, no exception but it, the sock is very forgiving because it's very stretchy so once you have sewn this in it's all completed so secure it off on the back i'm just going to thread it through a little bit wrap it round it into a knot and then I can chop that bit off. I do end up with a little sock bits but surprisingly enough the socks don't fray very much especially uh, if you have the plain ones. These ones kind of tend to because they're like an intarsia sock aren't they? Big word for me today. The next thing I'm going to do is, while I've got it at this top end, I'm just going to trim these corners off. So it's for when we turn it back round, we won't have a lot of fabric hanging around to make it bumpy. I'll get rid of those pieces. Don't need those. Too small for anything. The next thing I'm going to do is to have a look at the legs. Now, it's going to be a similar situation. I'm going to take it from that corner, I'm going to curve it round and then stitch up to there. I'm not going to stitch right up to the top, I'm going to leave a gap because we have to put some, well we have to turn it out again, we have to turn it the right way around and then we have to stuff it. So with a similar piece of thread, I'll just thread up another needle. How has your day been anyway? I hope you're having a good, a good day. Mine's been particularly good. I've enjoyed it. Um, the weather's not been so great today as it was yesterday, but 
you can't complain for November in the UK. It's, it is as it is. What time is it now? It's probably about 20 past three and the, the weather is just disappearing, as my dear old mum would say. She said, the weather disappears at about half past two, three o'clock. And that was her way of saying, don't hang out the washing then because <laughs> it's not worth it. The weather disappears. <laughs> So I'm doing the same again. I'm going from that corner, I'm going to curve it round and then I'm going to sew up that side there. If you're feeling less confident um, than I am at the moment, you can just uh, pin it with some clips. Now, if that makes you feel happier, I am reckless, as you know, so I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going in with the threads. And it's really very simple matter just to put this together with a simple back stitch you can see how quick it would be with a sewing machine the, i used to knock out quite a few of these in one day once i've got my sewing machine the longest time then is just attaching um the arms and doing the the, the muzzle the snout whatever you want to call it and um stuffing stuffing takes up time because i sometimes wished when i was making these that i had those um stuffing machines that they have in companies like build a bear <laughs> you just go there and it fills it up in no time whereas i have to sit there with my stuffing fork and a whole pile of polyester stuffing and it just takes a while really doesn't take that long to be fair but when you're making 20 um that machine would have been handy <laughs> oh dear yeah the weirdest one i ever made was a sock elephant it just did not look quite right so i'd have to modify that if i made another one ever again um but the giraffes are nice they're a nice make and they come out really cute if i can find pictures of the giraffes that i made i will uh, try and remember to put it on um on the back of this video i can find them out because they're quite cute so it's been that kind of a uh, week where i have been delving into all the things that I can sit on the sofa <laughs> and make without causing too much of a mess. Um, so it's been crochet, it's been knitting. I don't know if you have seen my Instagram, I've been making some snoods or cowls or whatever you want to call them and um, having lots of fun putting those together um so i'm also thinking ahead for christmas presents so these also will possibly be part of my christmas present arsenal once i've made them <laughs> um so they're quite as i say they're quite a nice thing and sock monkeys originally were given to people uh, as a good luck token so wishing someone good luck or good health with a sock monkey would be the way to go i also know that traditionally they were made with the socks that had the red heels am i right uh, i don't think we ever had them in the uk but i reckon they were um from the us the red heeled socks I'm trying to remember what they were called they did have a name and traditionally a sock monkey would be made with those um but i quite enjoy the look of these quirky boys they uh, they don't have so much of a huge forehead and they um the ones i do have a little wry smile that goes onto the side of their faces <laughs> gives them quite a cheeky look okay so i'm going to do this one and then i will complete the other off camera because you don't want to sit and see me 
sew up two legs of a monkey and listen to me waffle on. Maybe you do. I don't know. Perhaps you do. <laughs> so, yeah, a little bit of back stitching. You can use whichever thread you like as well. Uh, I quite like using this anchor pearl thread because, as I said, it's quite thick and strong. And although these socks are very stretchy, as are most socks, um, you don't want to put too much pressure on um, when you're stuffing. You know, you don't want to be stuffing them so far that they... A, look out of shape, or B, start to make the seam stretch too much. Because socks are stretchy, but stitching is a straight stitch. So I'm going to stop there. So um, I'm going to do the other side, but then I'll have a gap from there to there for which I can turn through my monkey. So I'm going to do that now. If you're doing this along with me, pause and carry on and do your other leg as well. So the same way, going from that edge of a cuff, rounding it up and then taking it up and leaving a gap in between the legs there so that we can turn it and stuff it. Okay, so both legs have been completed. So we've done the top, we've done the legs. Now this bottom part here, I just want to trim off these corners like we did for the head so that it's not so bulky in the toe area. I'm just going to take it round and chop them off like so. Get rid of all these bits. I hate a bitty desk. <laughs> I am generally a messy person, but I can't stand little bits and things. It's weird, isn't it? Okay, more there. <laughs> right, I have these handy dandy turning tools. If you haven't got these, um, then a chopstick would do. But these are really handy, lots of things. And because I've got them, I'm going to use them. Um, so first of all, that little gap that we left in between the legs there. We're going to turn out the top part of the body carefully. You don't want to stretch it too much um, where it's not stitched. So that is that. So that's the top part. That's where his head is there. And then we're going to do the legs. So how I do this is I've got my handy turning tool. Stick that upside inside of there. Put the wooden part on the top of there. And then it just pushes out really cleverly like that. Now I can just work it around just to push all those edges out. That's one leg. And then we do the same for the second one. Let's find my entrance in there. There it is. <laughs> so taking that up there, holding it down, inserting the inner wooden part and pulling it through. Just makes life that little bit easier. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my stick just to poke out the end of the toe. So now we've got a beautiful shape. It looks like this. You could make frogs this way. Just a little thought I had suddenly. Frogs would be great. <laughs> um, so this little gap, you need to locate that now. And what we're going to do is we're going to stuff. I always stuff the top half of the body first. But it doesn't really matter. You can do either. You can do the legs first and then do the top. Um, I might do it that way around just for the heck. <laughs> so I'm going to get my stuffing, which is like a polyester. I'll show you the kind I've got. It's quite a squishy boy like this, really soft. And I'm going to now just sit and stuff my, um, my monkey's body and legs. 
Before I um, stuff the body, I thought I'd just show you how we then get the other parts for our monkey. So let's have a look at our guy here. So he's got arms. These need to be cut out. And this one's got a tail. Now, you don't have to do a tail. It's not necessary. But I think the monkey would tell you, yeah, he does. He wants a tail. They all like a nice tail. And then the ears here are made out of the toe part or the heel part of the other sock. So we have our second sock here. And what I like to do is to cut the tail first. This is my way of doing it. It's not everybody's way that people will show different ways of doing this. So this is how I do it. So I take it right from the toe, not on the side with the heel. So it's the opposite side from the heel. And I just cut up to the cuff of the sock. I've got a nice tail piece. So what I'll do then is I will turn this right sides together and stitch all the way up it so that we've got a nice long snaky tube. So that's the next part. Then for the arms, really simple. I will take it off to just above where the heel is there. And then open it out and cut along the middle. And these will be the arms of your monkey. The other thing you're going to need is ears. So you can use the heel and the toe part of this in order to make the ears. And then you'll find yourself with this little bit like I had here. <laughs> it's kind of like, see, I'll cut that bit off, cut that bit off. And I will have this little bit here that's kind of just a spare piece which I will keep because they always come in handy for something. So I'm going to chop off these bits while I've got this second sock. I'm just going to cut around. I'm just going to leave a little bit around the purple just so I've got a little bit of turning room. And on this one, I'm just going to chop there. You can see now I've got almost exactly the same size piece as I have here this one let's just measure it and see yep <laughs> almost exactly the same size so i am going to sew these together um i did consider stuffing the the main body part and then i thought no we'll do this part and then stuff everything together it just makes sense that way um it's what I'd do if I was doing a few of them. I'd cut all the parts out ready and then i just have a stuffing session. <laughs> did sound quite wrong, but that's what I would do. So for the tail, as I said, what you do is turn it so that you've got two right sides together. And then you'll back stitch, leaving the 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 top of the cuff part open. So you back stitch all the way down to the toe, which will be together. You can clip this if, if you find it easier. And that bit you can close up. You can close that part up. So leave open the cuff top and then stitch it all the way down. With the arm parts, again, you will fold it so that they are right sides together on each one and like I did with the feet I'll start there and curve it round to give a little bit of a curve to each of the arms so that we've got a little paw on each end and then I will leave that top part there this one here that will be left open for stuffing purposes so you do that twice and these bits we'll leave until the end because I'll show you how to fit those on because they're kind of, some of them are fitted on and then stuffed, some of them are stuffed and then fitted on. It's, it, it's easier if I show you with those two. But you can now go ahead and make your legs and arms. And um, yeah, I'll be back here to 
fit it all together. Okay, so all of your monkey bits <laughs> are sewn and what you need to do is stuff them. So you grab hold of some of your polyfiller, not polyfiller, but polyester filling, toy stuffing, should I say. And what you're going to be doing is filling your limbs and body with the stuffing. So I've got my little fork here, which I am going to push the stuffing down to the end of the paw. You don't want to overstuff. If you overstuff it, it's just going to look lumpy and weird. So you want to try and avoid lumpy and weird. <laughs> try and avoid lumpy and weird. That's um, in every stage of your life. <laughs> Actually, I embrace lumpy and weird in all forms. Thank you very much. But not in my monkey limbs. <laughs> okay. oh. So you can get away with your fingers. But if you haven't got one of these stuffing forks, um, a chopstick will do just as well. I say it will do just as well. This has been blooming brilliant and I don't even know if you can still get these. Um, I got these years ago. It's a stuffing fork by Barbara Willis Designs. 1994 was when it was um, brought out, I think. I don't know whether they are still available. I've got the mini and the regular of these and they've been an absolute boon. So if you know where you can get hold of them, then um, they are well worth it. If you're going to make a few, if you're only going to make one, then a chopstick will do the job. As I said, I've made, I must have made, I must have made about 50, 60 of these. So, and dolls and teddy bears and stuff. That's going to be taking me well over the 100 mark. So um, it's been well worth it for me. So you don't want to make it so that it, your pattern's distorted. That's if you've got a pattern, that is. Also, if you've got a sock that is a plain coloured sock, you don't want it so that you can see the stuffing through it. And you will find that sometimes with like black socks and you're using white stuffing, you can actually see it sometimes a little bit. Once you, it's like a sausage, really. You've just got to kind of manoeuvre it a little bit to get the stuffing into the place you want it to be. Here's one I stuffed earlier. <laughs> so you want to try and match up the same amount of stuffing in each one. So we're almost there with this one. They don't take too long to stuff. And once you get to the and, but you don't want to be pushing it down with the stuffing fork on this um, when it gets right to the end. Just use your fingers to manoeuvre it. I would say they're about the same now. So it's perfect. So we've got two monkey arms stuffed. The tail. The tail is a quandary. To stuff or not to stuff. This end is not stuffed. This end is stuffed. I want it to go with a, a double. <laughs> it's stuffed at one end and not stuffed at the other. I just tied a knot in the end of it as well, just for a bit of quirky fun. Um, sometimes you'll find the pattern won't allow you to push down hard enough. Um, if you have the turn, this is another thing that I have, I have had for many years, the turn through tools. Uh, these are probably still available somewhere as well. And when you're turning like long things like this tail, they come in absolutely so handy. And what I did was I stuffed the plastic part of the turn through to down 
into the tail and then push the stuffing through that because on the inside of here you've got a lot of stitches let me show you on the spare piece there's a lot of stitches that a, um, a stuffing fork or um, a chopstick can get caught up on so pushing that down there made the stuffing of this tail possible <laughs> But you don't have to stuff it. As I say, it would be a nice tail. It should be a floppier tail, but it would be a nice tail even without the stuffing. That's what I say anyway. Okay, so, oopsie, come here. So this is the body. Let's take you up a bit. This is the body and the legs of my monkey. And remember we had that gap. I stuffed all the body, I stuffed all the legs. And where the gap was, I've just done a mattress stitch, which is kind of like you take a bit from one side, you take a bit from the other side and pull it. And it kind of pulls it all together. And that's how that little gap was closed. Remember, we had to leave a gap to, put, to turn it through and put the stuffing in. So that's all completed now. So now we are to the point where we're going to add his muzzle on. And if you want to, if we grab this other guy back again, I did a little piece of felt there just by way of adding interest. And I have cut out a little mustard piece of felt here. That will do the same kind of job there. Um, so I'm going to sew that on now. So um, let me grab my needle. I've got my thread. Get rid of some fluff. And this will probably go into um, fast stitch mode. <laughs> For the simple reason that this video is going to be super long otherwise. So I'm going to put you on a little bit of music and fast stitch it. If you don't like the music, just, just mute me until this bit's over. Okay, so I have stitched around. You've noticed I've not stitched at the bottom here, and that's because over the top of that, we're going to have this toe piece that we cut off. I think it was a toe. Yes, it was. And we're going to attach this to our monkey. <laughs> now, I am not going to stuff it, I don't think, until we've actually got part of it on that's the plan so I'm gonna grab my thread and cut off a fair amount we're going to sew on the muzzle Let's see if I can ever thread my needle. It's the curse of the camera. <laughs> as soon as the camera is involved, the thread says, nope, ain't going in there. What's in there? I've done it. Sorry, I keep knocking the camera with my hand, which is unfortunate. Not very good. Okay, so I kind of want my muzzle to be there. And I have got some pins, which I hate. 
as you know, but I'm going to use just to position where I want it to sit. Now you can kind of, I'm bashing the camera again, let me take this back up. Um, so I am going to do what is known in the trade as a mattress stitch. Similarly to how we um, to how we finished off the bit in between his legs. So you can see how I do this. Um, so you take a little bit from the backing. And then a little bit from the muzzle. I'm just kind of turning it under a little bit as I go. So it's a bit from the back in, a bit from the muzzle. I'm just kind of going up kind of like a ladder. And you go in and there, pulling it tight. And then going into your fabric there. This is probably the trickiest bit. And it's the bit that makes your monkey look how you want him to look. So take your time with attaching this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off and leave you to sew on your muzzle. And I'll be back when I get to the other end of here so that we can see what we do next. So you carry on, stitch yours up. We'll get to about there where that pin is and then I'll come back. Okay, I stitched to where the pin was and now we're kind of just taking it around onto the sock fabric now and then into the muzzle. And it's the same thing, we're just gonna keep going round. But in a minute, I'm going to stop and add some stuffing in so you can see how it wants to be positioned then, hopefully. Oops. It's just a little bit fiddly. Okay, right. So I've attached it a little way down there and we can start to put some of the stuffing in and see how this is going to look. So Wow, he's cute. <laughs> he's got a cute look to him. Again, you don't want to overstuff it. It doesn't need the hugest nose or you can make it as huge as you like, really, but I tend to think there's like an optimum amount of stuffing and you can add more. So we've got an idea of how he's going to look and I'm going to continue stitching. And let's take you down a little bit further. As I say, this is the probably the fiddliest bit, really. And once you get a hang of it, it's not bad at all. And the thing is, the, the sock fabric is very forgiving. You just have to persevere with it. Think about where you want your muzzle to be positioned and you can just pull it in and it will fold in, which is rather nice of it. It's going in there. Pulling it tight and it turns itself under quite nicely. I'm just sticking it in there. Little bits of stuffing hanging out. That's all well and good because we can tidy those up as we go. So where am I up to? I'm stitching into the nosy bit. <laughs> Gathering bits of fluff as I go. Um, I'm going to continue round to the other side, but I'm just going to leave a slight gap so we can review and see if we need to add in even more stuffing. So I'm going to carry on now and I'll catch you up back at the other end there and we'll have a little gap, see if we need to add in any more. Okay, so I have 
left a slight gap there you can see down the side just to see if I want to add in any other stuffing I might just add a little bit in <laughs> just a tidge so I like them to have quite big noses <laughs> It will keep stretching to accommodate your stuffing as well. So don't get too crazy. <laughs> I'm quite liking the way he's looking now. Got a nice squishy nose. Go on a little bit more. Nice squishy and bouncy schnoz. There he is. Okay. So back to our mattress stitch to finish off this muzzle part. And this is how you will attach your other limbs as well and the ears. Uh, the ears will be in a similar manner because the way I do my ears is to make them like the muzzle but smaller and on the sides of his head to give him some ears. You can actually stitch ear shapes if you want to. It really is down to how you want your monkey to look. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm finishing off with a knot and then I'm taking that knot inside the body of the monkey and then pulling it so that it's tight because then that thread will disappear inside like that and you won't even know it's there. Right so now the next thing I want to put on him is his eyes and you can kind of mark where you would like them to be. So I kind of want one there I think, and one there. I think that's how it goes, like there and there. And I have got my trusty awl. I'm just going to mind in your fingers out of the way with this one. <laughs> I'm just going to put some holes in. Hopefully, it will show in the felt where the eyeballs are going to sit. Now you can, you don't have to do this. You could actually just sew on some buttons for eyes if you like that idea. You could, actually that's kind of slightly higher. Let's take it lower there. Uh, you could um, stitch some eyes on, you know, with like a satin stitch. I am going to use some buttons for mine. So I'll just grab those now and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got, ooh, <laughs> did have, I've got these little black buttons. I've got a little shank at the back to stitch them through. Uh, you can get safety eyes. My only point in contention with that is that how, how do you get them in afterwards and positioning them beforehand is not impossible, but a little trickier, I would say. Um, so these are the ones on this guy are like um, antique shoe buttons <laughs> that I have in my possession. I think they were my grandmother's actually. Uh, these are smaller so you choose the size of eye that you want. It's going to give them a different look. They're going to look different but then they're different guys, you know. They're not the same. So I'm going to get, get my thread. I'm going to use the same colour you can use black thread if you want to. I've got quite a long needle for this and you can actually use doll needles for this as well but you've also got to remember it's got to be able to go through that shank at the back of your button. So as long as it fits it's all good. Right I'm going to do a knot in the back of there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from underneath there and I'm going to come up to where that first hole that I did with my awl is. Hopefully that will hold. Yes it will. I'm going to thread my shank of my bottom through there and I'm going to take it in 
I'm just going to take it through to the back just now, just for now, to pull it through. And you can kind of pull them in as tight as you like. I want that to go back through there and come out at the other hole. <laughs> she said, be careful where you place your fingers for this. So there. Okay, that's pulling in. Just right. And grab, grab him out of the eye. Threading through the shank. Taking it back. And I'm going to take it to the ear this time. Simply for the reason that I want to be able to pull it tight. There it is. He's got his eyeballs in. <laughs> I might actually make that hole slightly bigger. So you can wiggle it around and make it a bit bigger so that I can pull it even tighter. So that, that fits in nicely. And I want that one to sit in there like that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Now, I know the ear is going to go here, so I'm just going to put a little knot there. Fasten off. And then, like I did before, I'm going to take it through the body, pull it so that it's fairly taut. Don't cut the sock fabric, though, and it'll pop back inside. So there we have a monkey, <laughs> and he has his muzzle. Well, you can make different shapes of the muzzle. You can take it wider. Um, this guy is kind of wider, maybe. And this one's just kind of, okay, okay. <laughs> Looking good. Right. So pull that out a bit at the back. That's cool. Yeah. Now we are going to attach the arms. So, you have the open end of your arm there. You want to have a look, see where you want your arms to sit. Again, the pins could come in handy for this. And also remembering at the side, you want them to be the same height. I'm just going to eyeball this. <laughs> but you could just like kind of just pin it in position if you wanted to, if you're not, as, if you're not feeling as confident. And I am going to get some more thread. <laughs> I seem to be using this gold one quite a lot. Um, I did have like a berry one that I used for stitching up, but it really doesn't matter because in the end you don't actually see. You don't see it. No, that's not going to thread. Typical. The light's disappearing now. Actually, it's coming back again. It's weird weather outside. It went really dark just then. Hopefully, it's going to be bright enough so that we can finish off. Stitching our monkey. So, the method I'm going to show you here is the same method you use for both of his arms and his tail. Now his tail obviously goes on the back, positioned slightly low. If you have a look at this one, it's positioned a little bit higher than where the bottom of the heel is there. You, you do you, put your tail where you want him to go and that one is going to sit on there probably. But I'm just going to show you one of them to save on time. And this is for all three of those parts that you need to attach this way. And it's the same kind of method that you're gonna, that you use to do the muzzle. It's gonna be like a, a mattressy stitch. I'm just trying to position where I want his arms to be. So I'm gonna stitch one stitch through the arm there. I'm gonna hold it on and I am going to Take some fabric from the bottom part 
take some fabric from the stop part and we're kind of making a little ladder so that we can stitch all the way around the arm. To turn it as you go, I'll take the camera down. I hope I don't bash the camera. Actually, I'll take the camera up <laughs> and go in closer. That's probably a better idea. Can you see? So I'm going in and a little bit of the fabric on top, the arm, and a little bit of the fabric in the sock bit underneath. You can position this a lot better than I was trying to stitch it with it being still under the camera. So it's not as easy, but I want you to be able to see. And when I pull it in, you can see that goes underneath, which is quite nice. As I say, the sock fabric is very forgiving. Let's turn him around a bit. You can still see. So a bit from the sock, a bit from the body. Just keep pulling it around, pulling it tighter, and that closes all the gap in between. And those raw edges will turn in to the inside. Almost round to this side. You can still see. If you're at all worried, just keep pushing those little bits underneath with your needle. It'll all work out fine, promise. <laughs> In. And a bit of fabric. You could, if you wanted to, take a different route with the arms. I like this method because it makes him kind of flexible. But you could uh, sew up the top of it and then just sew it on with a button for the arms. If you do button arms on toys before, then that's how that could work. But that's attached quite nicely. Once it's all the way around, give it an extra one for luck, wrap it round. Pull it tight and then I will take that through the body, put it quite tight and lose it. I've got one arm on. So you're going to do that with the, the other arm on that side. Sorry, I can widen you back out now. <laughs> the other arm on that side and the tail on the back and then We'll be on to the ears. Okay, so Mr. Monkey has his arms and his tail affixed. And now he can't hear anything. Where's my ears? Where's my ears? <laughs> Going to do those now. Um, with his arms as well, you can manangle them into... Yeah, where's, where's my arms? Where? <laughs> so you've got your arms. It's your ears you need, mate. Oh, yeah. Ears, ears, where's my ears? <laughs> I do entertain myself. Right, so you remember we've got these two bits. We've got a bit of ta uh, a bit of toe and a bit of heel. What we are going to do with these is push you to one side, boy. You sit over there and get rid of these little bits. And a pin, that's kind of dangerous. Um, back to my berry coloured thread. Let's turn you around a bit again. There we go. Fair amount on here. Grab my needle. Don't worry about the pen. I will go hunting for it later. Or it will find me in my foot. <laughs> Hopefully not the latter. And I am going to do a running stitch all around this little I think this is a toe part but the toe and the heel so as I say you can make fashion ears out of that spare bit that we've got if you want to do it that way some people do that 
you can make some oval shapes to make some ears i like these kind of ears so this is what i'm going to show you um if you do searches you can find all different ways to put your ears together <laughs> this is the one that i like best so i'm gathering up a little bit as you can see as i go kind of like a bally shape so I am around round to the beginning again to that okay now what we need is some more stuffing you do get through quite a bit of this so if you're intending to make more than one you're going to need a big bag of it. You can also get wool, um, like a wool stuffing as well, which I use in my teddy bears. But I think this stuff is just nice and soft, soft and squishy. And it makes a nice soft, squishy ear. <laughs> so, squish, squish. Don't want it to be too big. I'm just going to pull that tight now so that I can see where it's going. And that looks just about right to me. So I am going to grab my thread. I'm going to just roughly sew it together. I say roughly because I'm going to stitch it onto the monkey and these bits will be hidden, she said, hopefully. Yeah, that's about right. A nice ear shape. And if you don't like these kind of ears, then you you do you, as I always say, you do you, and do the overly shaped ones if you like. But I quite like this. Okay, so as I have got quite a bit of thread, I'm just going to put this straight on to the monkey. Turn it around the way I want it to be, and I want it to be kind of there-ish. It's a bit fiddly. If you're finding it too fiddly, then pin it by all means. The same method that we used before, a little bit of the ear, and then the underneath. And then we're kind of tucking those raw ends underneath as well as we go. Just going around the base, pulling it in, doing a twist. Hopefully you can still see. Let me do, do with this. There we go. A bit of the ear ball and a bit of the underneath. All the way around. Tucking it in as we go so that all that raw edged bit of the sock is hidden underneath the stitching. <laughs> Give it a quick squid. Okay. And around to this top end, bit of the ear, tucking under the bits, bit of the body, bit of the ear, and then we're back round to the beginning again. Yeah, ear, ear. <laughs> That's one ear on, and we do what we, we usually do wrap it around a couple of times to hold it and then lose the needle inside the body pull it tight and being careful not to snip the sock snipping it so we've got one ear do the same with the other one and then you'll have a two-eared monkey <laughs> come back to me when that's finished and we'll have a look at finishing him off with a little mouse Hopefully you're back and your monkey has two ears <laughs> and two arms and a tail. 
and that's all fitted now how i like to finish mine off you could finish yours off many ways you could put a line that goes all along there if you want him to have a traditional monkey kind of face so you could like stitch a line across there you could give him a couple of little no nostrils if you wanted to i am not doing nostrils on mine i am just going to give him a little mouth and I like to have him a little smirky mouth. He has a little smirky mouth going off to the side. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got this bit of thread left over, which is going to be perfect to do. <laughs> if I can thread it, thread it off camera. <laughs> no one will know. <laughs> no one will know how many times you try and thread this. Ha ha! Didn't take long at all, really, did it? Okay, so I am going to put a knot in one end, right at the very end, just because I want it to stay in place, in a hidden spot. <laughs> so I'm going to just trim that off to there. Hopefully this will stay. I'm going to take it in from the side here, bring it out to the front, and that will hide in there. Okay. So I'm going to go there because then I'm going to have a little side smirk. I'm going to take it down there, like so. It's got a little sideways smirk going on. And I'm going to go back, pulled it too tight. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to go back in where I came out then. And I'm going to take it there. And that gives him his little smile. <laughs> and then I'm going to take this down to here. Not too tightly. And hopefully, where's my end gone? I've lost my end. There it is. I'm just going to tie a little knot, uh, wrap it around, stick it in, put it there. And that's all finished. He's got a little smile. He's folding his arms. Because <laughs> he's a bit sassy. It's a sassy monkey. And now they have a friend. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and play with these now for a while. I hope you've enjoyed looking to see how we make them. I hope you're going to have a go yourself. Please let me know if you do. I would love to see your monkeys. I adore them. So if you catch me on instagram or tag me on instagram when you've posted pictures of your monkeys i'd be so happy to see what you make of yours you can see they both have very different characters look at them they all turn out differently and they all turn out how they you know how you want them to but also with their own little twist on things anyway hope you've enjoyed that i will see you back here very soon with something else bye for now Boy, boy.